This morning we're talking about thankfulness for family, and it's not so much in the scope of what you and I may think about, about our earthly families and those that are around us and those that are close to us, although those are very important to us. But I want us to really think about what it means to be a part of the family of God, because ultimately that is so much more valuable to us than even those people that are close to us. Even those people that we have here, those people that we remember that have gone, this is something that we need to understand in order to truly be thankful to know who God is and what he has done for us and who we worship today. I'm amazed that we look at society to understand and define what family is. And if you don't have to go far to know that there's some pretty far out there definitions of family. But I came across one that said family is defined as a socially, and that's a key word, socially recognized group, usually joined by blood or marriage or cohabitating or adoption or just being together, some kind of group that forms an emotional connection and serves as an economic unit of society. And many psychologists even go a little further and identify different types of families based on how they are together or how they enter together. Why is family important? Why do we see these as important, not only in society today, but for us as individuals? And I'm going to just go ahead and say and be real with you all this morning that not everybody has a good family. Not everybody has a healthy family. Not every family unit that we see is something that we really like to talk about or uh, go back to or remember. But why is it important for us to have families? What, however we may define that, and hopefully through today we'll understand a better grasp of family and what God's Word says about it. But why are these important? It's because we love to belong to something. You and I love to be connected together. That's why we were created in the way that we were, that we love these things that we can call friends and family together. We love the security that it brings, whether that be financially, being able to do this. And of course, again, I know not every family is perfect, but there is some sense of security that we have in family. There's the emotional side of it that brings happiness during those times that we're able to celebrate and remember and come together. There's satisfaction that we have, the approval that we have from family in most cases. And then also there's the idea of procreation. Families bring life to earth through God's perspective and God's definition. So families are important to us. But of all these things that we've talked about, security, happiness, satisfaction, belonging, all of these kind of things, let me just ask you this question to think about this morning. Which one of those are eternal? What I mean by that are which ones are going to last forever? Of the reasons and importance of being in part of a family, how many of those reasons that we've listed are really going to last beyond our life on this earth? You know, see, again, if we're, that's what really we're going to understand, it brings a new meaning to this idea of family. Family is wonderful for us, but what's the long-term eternal gratification and satisfaction that we have? You see, if we're just to rely upon what society tells us, what sociologists and psychologists tell us about the benefits of family, does it really impact me in an eternal way, the way that we were created to be with God himself as God our creator. One thing that I've learned is that God is the creator of all, but God is not the father of all. God is the creator of all, but God is not the father of all. You see, when we begin to understand things that we can be thankful for, we have to see God for who he is. God and how he created each and every one of us for a specific purpose. Some of you may be here today and say, well, God, if God wanted me to be a part of a family, then where is he? Where is she? Who is that person that I can come together and connect with and make my family together? Well, I don't have an answer for that. I just threw that out there for us to think about. Because you see, sometimes God is a little bigger than my understanding. His ways are much more than what I can even fathom or or create in some kind of sermon this morning. 
But what I'm telling you is what I know about God's word. You see, when we begin to recognize what God has done for us to allow us to be a part of his family, that's an amazing thing that changes my perspective of all the things that I do here on this earth, of my purpose as a son, as a husband, as a father, as a brother, as a brother-in-law, as all of those roles that I have with family in my life. But to understand that, I want us to talk about what it really means to be a part of a family. And for us to do that, we have to go back to what this whole idea of being a part of God's family. God is the creator of all, but if he's not the father of all, how does he become a father in my life? How do I understand that and become a child of God as we have sung about? Well, we have to go back to seeing why we need to be a part of God's family. Why is it important for you and I to be a part of God's family? We've talked about this idea of what people say is important for family, to be connected, to have that closeness, to feel the security and the the bond that we have and all of those things that we mention together. But what about God's family? Well, we first of all have to understand that at one time you and I were, get this, we were separated from God. Sorry to burst your bubble, but that's the way that we were. We were alienated from God. At some point in our life, something happened that allowed us to not be in fellowship. In fact, if we go back to the very beginning in Genesis chapter 3, verse 23, it says, So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. So if God comes to the point of banishing, why is that? And we know that's because of sin that entered and broke the fellowship that we now have the opportunity that we were created to have with God because of all that he has given us. We were created in the image of God, which is that personal intimate relationship with him. That's our purpose. But because of sin in our life, that fellowship has been broken to where we cannot experience that fullness that God wants to pour into our lives in that intimate relationship as a child of God. Why? Because we were alienated. God cast them out, banished them. We also find in Scripture in Ephesians chapter 2, 12, the Apostle Paul explaining this idea of being separated and alienated from God as a child of God. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12 says this, remember that at that time you were separated from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. Now I'm glad that Paul brought such encouragement to us to remind us of who we really are. It doesn't take much for people to remind me that I need to be humbled. And let me tell you, Paul does that all the time. When I read Paul's letters, I'm like, oh my gosh, I am thankful that God loves me. That's what we talked about last week. The amazing thing that we have this thankfulness of that fact that God loves us in spite of who we are. Because scripture says you were without hope and without God in the world. Now, for those of us who know God who are able to be called a child of God because we've received what Jesus has done for us, we understand what it means to be a part of God's family. But let me tell you, there's a lot of people out there who have no clue. And part of that is our fault. A big part of that is our fault because we don't live out this excitement of being a part of the family of God. How many of us today said, and don't raise your hands again because if you do, I'll pray for you, How many of us said, oh, it's Sunday, I've got to get up and go to church? How many of you this morning got up and said, oh, it's cold outside and this bed is warm? See, sometimes we get so caught up in all of our things that we begin to realize that We are in a world where, as Paul says, we were separated from Christ, excluded, and foreigners, without hope and without God. He goes on in Ephesians in chapter 4, verse 18, that says, They were darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. 
Why is it that Scripture constantly tells us that we need to think on things above and our hearts need to be open to God? Why? Because if not, we will become hardened in our heart and we will lose the understanding of what it means to really be separated from God. Now, some of you may be saying, now, Paul, I'm saved and I know I'll never be separated from God. Well, then let's talk about our fellowship with God right now at this moment. How close do you feel as a child of God? How much were you able to worship this morning when we sang those songs, children or child of God? Did it really bring such a meaning to your life that it's going to change your outlook, change your perspective, change how you deal with people in the line at the restaurant today? Is it going to change you because you realize that you are a child of God? Because at once we were separated, alienated, foreigners, without hope. He goes on and says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 21, Paul had a great understanding of what this means to be separated from God. Once you were alienated from God and you were, get this, enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. Paul understood what it was like because you and I both know that as Saul, he hated Christians. He lived a life in such a way that he wanted to persecute and see Christians dead. He was so opposed to what God was doing through Jesus Christ that he gained the authority and power to go and to hunt people down. But then when he began to realize and came to that life-changing moment in his life of what Jesus had really done to save him from sin, and then as he began to learn what it means to be dead to self, that all of us are called to do because we know that, in, as he says in Romans chapter 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. He began to understand the working of Jesus in his life, that it wasn't just to be saved, but it was something more. You see, I believe that today the church has become so accustomed to being a part of God's family that they have forgotten what it means to be a child of God. We've carried around this label in the backpack with all of our neat Bibles and everything around us that we've become so accustomed to being all of the benefits that we don't really understand what it means to live day by day as a child of God. We have forgotten about the work of Jesus. In John chapter 1 verse 12, 13, it says, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born Get this, not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of husband's will, but born of God. Let me just stop right there and pause because this grabs me a little bit. When I began to consider the God of all creation, the God that created everything about us, all the things that we have on this earth, this incredible beauty that we have, and all that is in it, when God created that and created me for the purpose of having an intimate relationship with him so he could be able to pour in and his presence could be continually in my life. When I began to think about that God wanted me as his child so much that even when sin separated me from God, he allowed Christ to come into this earth to die on the cross in my place so that I might be reconciled to God and become a child of God. What does it really mean to you today to be a child of God? To know that God bore us to be his children, created us to be his children. God allowed that relationship to be reconciled. In Romans chapter 8 verse 14 it says this, for those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. The spirit who receives who re, the spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him, we cry, Abba, Father. You know, sometimes the English language just doesn't quite explain the meaning. And this is one of those areas where... um, it used to bother me when people would call God Daddy. So I thought, oh, that's kind of, you know, that's just, that's just the way I was brought up. 
But really, if we look at the meaning of these words, the idea can only be explained by the English word dad, which creates more than just a father, authority, patriarch figure. It is more an intimate connection between a dad and his child. And these are one of those moments where if we really begin to think and understand what it means to be a child of God, then we may be able to understand God as not just this big guy in the sky who has authority over me, but he is that intimate father who looks down upon me and weeps when I am struggling, and his heart is broken when I disobey him, and his heart is so full of love that he sometimes disciplines me when I choose not to follow him so that he can draw me back and say, you are my child. And what an amazing thing to be able to hear that, folks. And that's what I feel like we as a church have lost a sense of. To be able to hear the Father to call upon us as His children. To know that you have been forgiven because of what Christ has done. That no matter what has happened in your life, no matter what choices, today at this moment, you can be a child of God. Because it says in Scripture... Those that are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. He goes on and says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, For He chose us in Him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in His sight. In love, He predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ. You see, adoption is saying that we really have no right or benefit outside of the fact that the one who has adopted us. You see, the amazing thing to understand what Scripture is really teaching us is that we have no benefit to God Himself. Why? Because of sin, because we were alienated and separated. But when we are adopted, get this, it's not because of anything that we've done in our life. It's because that someone so loved us that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever should believe in Him should not perish but have eternal life so that we can become a child of God, adopted into his family, to be seen as a child of God. You see, when someone adopts a child, they're saying that I'm going to be that person in their life, that they might experience the closeness, the bond, the love, all of the benefits of being in a family. And that's what God has done for us. Why is it important for us to be a part of God's family? Because let me just remind you, He is the creator of all things, and He wants to be your Father. Three things that I just want to share with you as we kind of come to a close today of what it means to be a part of God's family. And I'm just going to remind you what Scripture says. This is not, you know, my points. This is not anything that I, you know, came up with. I just want to remind you of what God's Word says. And if you believe what God's Word says, then you and I need to live it. It's one thing that I always admired about my mom is that she always lived what she believed. And so every single time that I begin to consider, do I really believe the Bible? Well, Paul, are you living out the Bible? Because that will really tell you the answer. Let me just ask you this morning, let's be real a little bit. Are you a child of God? And if you are a child of God, if you really believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins so that you could be adopted into God's family, are you living as a child of God in everything that you do, in all of your actions, in all of your business, in all of your relating to people, in all of your responses? Oh, man. My toes are hurting. Let me just tell you. Some of y'all say, Pastor, you hurt my toes this morning. Well, mine are aching too. I'm just telling you. Because sometimes I don't live out 
the way I'm supposed to as a child of God. But this is what it means to be a part of a child of God. That's a whole other sermon we'll talk about later. But being a part of God's family, the first thing that we can experience is we can know his love. We can know his love. Ephesians 3, 17 and 18. If you don't know these scriptures, I hope that you read over them, that you keep your bulletin outline so you can go back and read these during those difficult times. But this is what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 3. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God, to know his love. The only way to know his love is to be his child, to have this love within our hearts because of what Jesus has done. If you call yourself a child of God, then you know his love that goes beyond my understanding. God, how can you love me when I do this. God, how can you love me in spite of all these things? It's because of his love and who he is that we are able to be called a child of God. Second thing that it allows us to do is it allows us access to God. Because of what Jesus has done for us, we were reconciled with him. Let me remind you of the fact in the gospel, when Jesus died on the cross, what happened to the veil in the temple that separated the inner presence of God in the Holy of Holies. What happened to that barrier? What happened to that veil? It was ripped from top to bottom, which opened up the presence of God to all people. When Jesus died on the cross, he paid the price so that we could then have access to believe what God has done in the fact that he has adopted us as his children if we believe in Jesus, if we live by the Spirit, as Scripture teaches us. Hebrews 4.16 says this, Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Let us approach God's throne. As a child of God, we can go before God. We can enter His presence because of what Jesus has done. John 14.6, Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, except through Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 1 and 2 says, Therefore, since we've been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. It's an amazing thing to know as a child of God that we now have access to God. It's not just you know, the fringe benefits of being a Christian, we are able to go before God because we are his children. Go before God with all of our struggles. Go before God with all of our sin. Go to God even in our shame because we have access to our heavenly Father. Last thing that I want to share with you is we have an inheritance from God. Romans 8, 16 says this, the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his suffering in order that we may also share in his glory. Man, amazing thing for us to understand is that as a child of God, we are heirs of all that he has, his glory. We are heirs of God's glory because we are God's children. We are God's children because of what Jesus did for us so that we might be able to experience all of God's glory, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ, that our lives are changed from darkness to light. It's an amazing thing for us to be called a child of God, to know that we have this inheritance. Don't ever let, church, don't ever let anyone or any circumstance come in and say, you are not worthy of what God has in store for you. You're not worthy to be happy. That is the biggest lie from Satan. Every single one of us, no matter what our circumstance, and let me tell you, there's times where I'm not happy. I don't want to be happy. I don't even want to be happy if I tried to be happy because I'm just in that funk. I know y'all are never like that because y'all are better people than me. 
But there is some times where we can understand that God has given us the inheritance through Jesus Christ to be able to share in his glory. 1 Peter 1, 3 through 5 says this, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And, get this, into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power. Wow. Shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. We have an inheritance that is going to last an eternity. Last scripture. Colossians 1, 9 through 14 says this. For this reason, since we... Since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. The Apostle Paul says, We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all the power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he rescued you from the dominion of darkness And brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves. In whom we have redemption. The forgiveness of sins. What does it mean to you to be a child of God? What does it mean to you to be able to know that you have God's love? That you have access to God the heavenly father. And that you have an inheritance Of all that God promises. You see that gives me a sense of security. A sense of belonging. A sense of happiness. A sense of joy. A sense of being a part. A sense of purpose. And it's not because of what my family does for me. It's because of the fact that I know I'm a child of my heavenly father. I'm wondering today if you really know that. If you really understand what it means to be a part of God's family, a child of God. To know that God loves you more than what we can understand because he sent his son to die for you so that you could be adopted in. And if you do believe that, are you living that? Are you living every day as a child of God? To know that I have been given this thing and I'm called to live as a child so that people can know and hopefully become adopted as well. You see, one of the things that I've learned in social media is all of the pictures that I see of the children standing there holding their signs that says, when they have become adopted into a family. And those are precious pictures because they remind me of such hope and joy that they bring these children when they're now able officially and legally to be a part of something that is beyond them, that this family has brought them in to be their own. Do you know what it's like to be a child of God? Are you living as a child Of God. Let's pray.